So not at the light, but at the... <laughs> I'm Greta Loomis. I'm currently serving on the Board of Directors of the CRCNA Canada and I have just retired as a personal financial planner. I'm here to help us together understand how donor-advised funds can be used to support the ministries of the CRC. A donor-advised fund is a lot like a bank account. You put your money in as you choose and you withdraw money at your own discretion. All the money that you put into a donor advised fund, you will receive a charitable receipt for every dollar. So it is a gift. It no longer belongs to you. It now belongs to the institution that is managing the donor advised fund. But you still have control of the withdrawals from that fund and you have control on how that money is invested over time. So you could tell this institution, I would now like to withdraw X number of dollars to go to the work of a certain charity, because that's the other thing that's very different. All the money that comes out of a donor advised fund must go to what the Government of Canada calls a qualified donee. And qualified donees are essentially Canadian registered charities. So the money that you hold in your donor advised fund can then be distributed as you wish to any Canadian registered charity like the work of the CRC, your local church, CRC ministries, or other charities that are close to your heart. I once worked with a couple who were selling a business. Their business was valued now greatly beyond what they ever imagined and far more than they had invested in it. That means, as they were looking at selling it, that they were going to incur some significant tax expenses called capital gains, which I think we're all familiar with. They decided that they would go to their accountant and say, please tell us how much money we need to put into a donor advised fund to bring the taxes on the sale of our business to zero. So he made that calculation. They took the proceeds of the sale to that number and created a donor advised fund with it. Then they were able to support any charitable work for the rest of their lifetime with the money that was in that fund. They actually set it up so that their weekly support of their local CRC came from that donor advised fund. When different CRC agencies had initiatives going on that were new or exciting, when there were things around the world that needed further support, they were able to do that from their donor advised fund. What happens then is that support doesn't have to come out of your discretionary income, especially if you're retired. That support can come out of your donor advised fund so that your monthly income can just be used to live life. I get excited about donor advised funds because they really are a win-win. Um, they can offset tax liabilities that people have coming their way from circumstances that they can't control. At the same time though, they give an opportunity for people to put sums of money away solely for the use of work by charity and ministry. Uh, they don't have to think about it as opportunities present themselves. They know that the funds are there to be very generous in their support. Some people think that donor advised funds can be used only by very wealthy people and to settle tax situations. That's not true. I once met a young couple who said, before we begin our marriage, we want to commit to giving. We want 10% of our income throughout our lifetime, and maybe more than that, to go to a fund that is there only to support charities that are close to our heart. So they did that. They had their bank withdraw 10% from all their income deposits and set that aside into a fund that was their donor advised fund. So whenever somebody would come to them and say, hey, could you sponsor me? I'm going on some international missionary work this summer, or the church has a special project. That's what they would use this separate fund for to make generous support of the requests that came their way. So a donor advised fund could be for anyone not just for the wealthy. So one note of caution perhaps about donor advised funds. You need a financial institution or a foundation to be able to hold that fund for you. 
Each one of them has their own guidelines and regulations, some of which include only being able to give out a certain percentage of your fund on an annual basis. Those are quite restrictive because you don't know what God's going to bring to you to support during the course of the year. Perhaps one year you want to give very little and the next year you want to give a significant piece of your fund to a charity that really calls to your heart. Something's going on that you want to be very generous to support. So be sure to speak with others and, to be, and be sure to read the fine print in the documents that you're signing to set up your donor advised fund. And do your research in advance. Since we know that a donor advised fund can be used by anyone, please feel free to speak with your CRC advancement personnel when they come to visit you or to just call them and ask them how that can be done. Donor advised fund can be used by anyone. We have the heart to be good stewards of what God has given us to manage it well. And he expects that in return for his generosity that comes our way. So being careful about how we do that, being wise about how we do that is so important to him. So please feel free to pick up the phone, to send an email, to find out more about how this applies to your personal situation.